Hello everybody. Welcome to part 2 of chapter 13 from the class 9 CBSC NCERT book. My name is Avantika Jakati. I hope you have seen part 1 before coming to this because I have explained a lot of things in part 1 which are uh, important not only from the syllabus point of view but also from uh, a general point of view which is something that is very important right now. Uh as always keep your books open so that you can jot down notes and you can correlate with whatever is given in the book. and you know what is what we are reading what topic we are reading so um let's get ahead with this part so this is what we learned in the first part we said that health is a state of physical mental and social well being absence of disease does not equal being in good health the health of an individual is dependent on his or her physical surroundings and uh, their economic status diseases have signs and symptoms diseases are classified as acute or chronic depending on the duration acute are short which do not cause long ill effects long term ill effects and chronic are long term diseases which cause many general ill effects in the body and the disease may be due to infectious or non infectious causes so in this chap in the first thing we are going to learn is about the agents of infectious diseases now they are infectious diseases are caused by various unicellular microorganisms such as bacteria fungi viruses and protozoa we have uh, talked about unicellular organisms earlier and we have talked about all these different uh, we haven't talked about viruses because that's a bit complicated and that is not in your syllabus but we have talked about bacteria fungi and protozoa right and they infections may also be caused by multicellular organisms such as worms okay so these are some of the uh, uh, some microscopic uh, some photographs from the microscope of different viruses and pathogens so these are all uh, these multicellular unicellular organisms actually any organism that causes a disease is called a pathogen so uh, these are some photographs of pathogens so this first one is the sars virus now sars virus uh, okay this scale here is for 500 nanometer which is half a micrometer right what is 1 nanometer 1 nanometer is 1000 oh, sorry the other way around 1 micrometer is 1000 nanometer what is 1 micro 10 to the power minus 6 so this is that small so this is 500 into 10 to the power minus 9 nanometer this is how small the scale is look at this uh, centimeter uh, sorry meter <laughs> what is going on 500 into 10 to the power minus 9 meter and this is how small these viruses are that's smaller than this much okay so this is the scale that's what they are showing in this all right so this is the sars virus now you have to remember that sars virus and covid corona virus they, are, they both belong to the family corona viridi so they are both very similar to each other right uh, the scale line gives an idea of how small the things that we are looking at so this is 500 nanometer which is uh, half a micrometer which is 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 6 meter okay this is staphylococcus now staphylococcus is uh, the bacterium which causes acne on the skin right staphylococcus is normally found on the skin sometimes it becomes infectious it's not acne is not a disease per se but it is an, a sort of an infection okay again this line is 5 micrometer long so this is 5 into 10 to the power Minus six. Now this is zero point five into ten to the power minus six. So this line, so about uh, this this line, so about half of them, the diameter is about half. So this is how small they are. So they are about half of this scale. Now the virus is so small that about seven or eight of them will fill. So the virus is much smaller than the bacterium. Okay, it's important to know the scale and what it means. uh this is a trypanosoma which causes it is a protozoan it causes the sleeping sickness there are two types uh, trypanosoma brucei and trypanosoma cruzi and they form they have different uh, so one of them is called african sleeping sickness the other is called american sleeping sickness but they both have 
similar symptoms that is caused by different protozoa right so uh, this organism is lying next to a saucer shaped red blood cell this is a cell of our body it's the red blood cell right of our body and that's how the small the protozoan is right so it's as small as a small cell of course it's unicellular so and this is leishmania leishmania is a protozoa again which causes kala azar the organisms are oval shaped and each one has a long whip like structure so this and it has a whip like structure okay one organism is dividing okay so this there is an arrow here and this shows that it is dividing you can see it's dividing into two parts like this okay so this is is dividing while a cell of the immune system lower right has gripped onto the two whips of the dividing organisms and it's sending cell processor up to eat the organisms now this is this is probably something called a macrophage because that is what actually eats Uh, uh we have cells in our body that actually eat the protozoa uh, eat microorganisms you know that is a part of the immune system so you can see that this is trying to this leishmania is trying to uh, divide multiply whereas the immune system is fighting it so this is sending a processes this is a process or a, a structure and uh, it is trying to go up so that it engulfs it completely ha huh? usko pura covers it up and then it can digest it so it basically eats it up this is probably a macrophage okay then then this is okay this is an ascaris this is a worm this is found normally in our body and uh, it is normally found in our body as a uh, as a as a pathogen uh, as a as, as a parasite actually um and an ascaris has the female is longer the male is smaller and uh, so ascaris lumicoides is found normally in intestines and it can grow very very long it remains coiled or it just it grows very long as a uh, as a parasite in our body and it can be killed by normal anti parasite so sometimes when uh, when people are young when children are young they eat uh stuff here and there or they just put things into their mouth so they have the chance of getting worms that is why they need to be dewormed sometimes right so they have worms these are parasites they spread through feces and other such stuff and uh, yeah these are parasites of the body so <laughs> what is this this is the this is sars cov2 which is covid okay i am showing you the structure of that here because this is the most famous pathogen right now so this is under the microscope this is the structure and these are the the crown like spokes that are found in it so this is actually that's why it's called corona virus because corona means crown and it because it has these spokes it looks like a crown on it right what are these this is the spike glycoprotein it's a protein it acts as an all these things can act as an antigens if if you have seen the previous video you will know what i mean by antigen it uh, gives an immune response in our body our body recognizes that and produces antibodies against it okay so this is the spike glycoprotein uh, rna and n protein right nuclear protein this is the envelope the envelope and hemo hemoglobin and ester is dimer okay so anyway so you don't need to know all of that but the point is this is what sars looks like a uh, covid looks like okay and these are and there is a bilayer of lipid on it so before so this envelope and there is a lipid bilayer on it which is actually what gets disturbed when you uh, wash your hands or when you use alcohol and by uh, disrupting the envelope of the uh, virus the virus can get killed right that is why it is pretty easy to actually kill the virus but it also multiplies very quickly when it is in the body so uh, you have to be careful not to get it inside the body so infectious agents now uh, there are 
various kinds of infectious agents like bacteria fungi viruses protozoa so virus can cause various diseases like common cold influenza dengue aids dengue dengue whatever and coronavirus so all of these are virus based hepatitis is also virus so uh, bacteria cholera typhoid tuberculosis anthrax these are all bacterial um, this is bacillus anthracis mycobacterium and cholera is vibrio cholerae typhoid is uh, uh, salmonella typhi then you have fungi fungi mostly cause skin infections so you might see ringworms or something like that on the skin it can itch sometimes you have corn on their feet or uh, you have some rashes there's those are fungi those are also quickly solved by some uh, treatments then you have protozoa malaria is caused by a protozoan right a plasmodium vivax and you have kala azar leishmania that we saw in the previous slides then you have worms such as intestinal worms or elephantiasis now elephantiasis is a disease it is caused by filarial worm right uh, what is elephantiasis i have i have told you i have spoken about it in one of the previous videos in one of the chapters where uh, the the foot the lymph glands get swollen and therefore the foot looks very big the foot becomes very big right and that is elephantiasis that is caused by a worm that is caused by a worm infection that is why it's a disease and it's a chronic disease like we spoke about in the previous video so these classifications are important to decide the treatment to how to treat a disease depends on what kind of infectious agent is present whatever in uh, works on worms will not work on virus will not work on bacteria or what works on a bacterium will not work on a fungus right so all these things need to have different kinds of treatments now the difference is because for example a virus a virus can live only inside a host cell a virus cannot survive outside of it when there is a virus outside on something eventually it cannot multiply and eventually it will die off there is it will only survive for uh however long that it does now you if if you have seen some covid guidelines you must have seen that uh, people talk about cardboard pe 72 hours rehta hai ya is pe itna time rehta hai wagera so the virus will not will not be able to multiply unless there is a living cell so but that is not the case with bacterium bacteriums do not live inside the cell they survive outside the cell and they can survive even without living cells right viruses specially need living cells to multiply and to basically uh, propagate their own uh, self but bacterium doesn't need that bacterium doesn't need to go inside a cell it doesn't need to use this machinery of the cell which is what a bacterium does a uh, virus does so there's again another difference is that viruses and bacteria multiply quickly whereas worms multiply slowly right and all bacteria like all bacteria are more closely related to each other than to viruses है ना सो बैक्टीरियम के जो कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स हैं दोज आर स्पेसिफिक फॉर बैक्टीरिया एंड दोज आर नॉट द सेम एज वायरसेस सो ऑल वायरसेस हैव सम स्पेसिफिक थिंग्स दैट आर कॉमन टू वायरस दैट इज व्हाई दे आर क्लासिफाइड वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट इट इन क्लासिफिकेशन दैट एवरी ग्रुप हैज स्पेसिफिक कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स दैट इज व्हाई दे आर ग्रुप टुगेदर right so mammals have certain characteristics and fish have certain characteristics and birds have certain characteristics in a similar way all bacteria have certain characteristics viruses have certain characteristics and they are different from each other right so whatever works on one bacterium may not affect a virus and vice versa whatever works on virus may not affect a bacterium also what affects one bacterium may not affect the other bacterium also this is a more uh, uh, more close difference between them it is a more uh, so this is a broad difference right bacterium and virus that's a broad difference so you know that you cannot use antibiotics on virus so virus hai to you should not use antibiotics within bacteria then you have various bacteria and then you have to decide treatment according to which bacterium it is right because each bacterium has a different characteristic theek okay? hai so the same drug cannot be used for bacteria and virus because antibiotics do not kill viruses and the same drug may not be effective against different bacteria now even antibiotics in general are effective against bacteria but one antibiotic may work against one bacterium while it does not work against other bacteria because there are certain differences in the uh, processes now these um, 
what these drugs do is what these antibiotics do is are uh, that they uh, they affect certain character certain life processes in the bacterium i'll tell you about penicillin now penicillin is an antibiotic what it does is it prevents the formation of cell wall which cell wall bacterial cell wall it prevents formation of bacterial cell wall so therefore it acts against bacteria but viruses do not have okay we also do not have cell wall right we do not have a bacterial cell wall therefore penicillin does not affect us and viruses also do not have cell wall so even the viruses are not affected so if you have a viral infection you cannot be treated with penicillin because penicillin only acts against bacteria by preventing formation of a cell wall okay and viruses do not have the same pathways as bacteria so even so this for is an example penicillin but there are many other uh, like erythromycin or uh, chloramphenicol these are all antibiotics that work against bacteria but do not work against viruses because viruses have different uh, pathways they have different uh, ways that they metabolize things that they synthesize things viruses have a different life cycle therefore these two an antibiotic will not work against both of them sometimes we may have bacterial infection along with viral infection and in such a case antibiotics are prescribed but only to fight the bacterial infection kabhi kabhi when you have like a sore throat or something so what happens is when you have an infection currently like a viral infection you become more susceptible to uh, some other kind of infection also of a different pathogen because your immune system is more focused on uh, fighting a specific kind of infection for example if you have a virus infection your body is trying to fight that virus usi time kisi bacterial ka bhi infection hua so your body is so focused on killing the virus that the bacterium also gets the chance to get uh, make an infect to infect your body right so your immune system cannot work against both at the same time right so sometimes you have mixed infections so in such a situation you have to treat both of those separately a bacterial infection can be treated by antibiotics but that will not affect the virus okay and uh, in some cases antibiotics are prescribed to fight the bacterial infection in the in those cases but they will not affect the virus okay now you have seen that these are certain pathogens that cause the diseases and they are infectious diseases because these are things that can pass from one person or one animal or one uh, individual to another these diseases that can move from an affected person to the other in a variety of ways are called communicable diseases now what happens is these pathogens can move from one human being to the other okay if this human being is infected then this human being can also get them right these are common ways of transmission we will talk about this this is Uh, what given in your book so from healthy person from infected person to healthy person how these things can uh, get transferred so the first is through air when you sneeze when you cough there are little droplets that come out of your nose and your mouth and those carry these bacteria or viruses or whatever is causing the disease right so these if they are in uh, inhaled by somebody else or if those droplets go and sit on a surface and then you touch that surface and then you are using that uh, hand which has touched that surface that has the bacteria or the viruses to um, touch your face then they can enter your body okay uh, uh, common things here are common cold pneumonia tuberculosis covid okay, i keep talking about covid because it's most easy for you to correlate with common cold you have must, you must have seen that there is uh, always a wave of common cold if somebody in your class gets uh, sardi khansi then uh, people around uh, around that person will also get sardi khansi you know and that happens that is a wave that is a seasonal wave generally okay so this happens because of the coughing and sneezing by the infected person the more crowded it is the more likely we are to be affected infected right that is why they say social distancing covid ka and that works for all of these things that works for all these diseases that spread through air right but there is a, a difference between being airborne and being born on droplets right that is a 
big this that is a uh, more uh, fine distinction so i don't know if you need to know about this but okay so through air most of these can pass and uh, then you have them through water so if excreta of an infected person gets mixed with drinking water then you can have uh, such diseases such as cholera even botulism botulism is food poisoning right so um, but i think that is generally caused by when the food gets spoiled so anyway so through water if excreta of an infected person gets mixed with the drinking water how does this happen why does this happen how can the excreta of a person get mixed with drinking water this is when the water supply isn't prop, uh, proper or uh, if like the pipelines have broken or in uh, especially in areas where the living conditions aren't very healthy such as the very crowded slums or where the water supply is really dirty or even when people uh, if they don't have any toilets they go and uh, do their business in the water or and that water is can often be used uh, by after some certain disinfection for drinking purposes but it is possible that in that small filtration whatever filtration happens then this bacterium doesn't get killed so through water there are so many diseases such as cholera and cholera has had a lot of epidemics we have had had a had many epidemics in india cholera epidemics and that has been a lot of problem because for a long time people didn't know what spreads cholera right uh, how cholera is spread and as in what really happens that cholera spreads so people eventually realize that it is because of hygiene and sanitation so if you have toilets if you ensure that people who are infected with cholera are uh, you know treated well or you know they are kept separately and whatever their excreta is doesn't get mixed into other things if that happens then cholera outbreaks can be uh, controlled but in previous times this was not known so once there was a cholera outbreak there will be like hundreds of people thousands of people infected by that and a lot of people died because this causes chronic uh, dehydration okay it spreads more in the absence of safe drinking water then there is something called okay so this is through water then this is through sexual contact this is generally through bodily fluids like aids or syphilis hiv aids uh, this is very commonly known as uh, something that spreads through sexual contact even hepatitis can spread through uh, sexual contact this is through unsafe sexual contact right not just sexual contact but something that is unsafe it does not spread through normal bodily contact right if you shake hands or if you hug or if you eat food with somebody or you know do do these small things and it is not going to spread through normal bodily contact okay because your body the aids virus is not sitting on your hand ki wo and you just shake hands and it passes no it is found in the bodily fluids and what happens is those bodily fluids have generally have to come in contact with the blood stream and only then do they uh, cause actually cause some problem so you have you don't discriminate against people who have these uh, diseases but you have to be careful spread they spread through blood sexual contact or even through even from an infected mother to her unborn child during pregnancy or breastfeeding and uh, but these things can actually be nowadays they can be uh, transferred from an infected mother to the child or through breastfeeding can actually nowadays be suppressed by uh, the use of certain drugs so even an infected mother uh, and a mother who is infected with hiv aids can give uh, birth to a healthy child without who doesn't have hiv right uh, so there are various ways these can be prevented okay so we'll talk about prevention further ahead so these are common ways of spread of uh the uh, diseases air water these are called airborne waterborne borne not borne okay there is a difference between borne and borne borne is to be born there you know you are born there you born somewhere wahan pe paida hue the right ye paida nahi hue hain air water and sexual contact se these are borne as in these things bear it हाँ, उसको एयर कंटेन्स इट एयर में पैदा नहीं हुआ है एयर के एयर में वो रहता है या वाटर में रहता है उसके थ्रू स्प्रेड होता है दैट इज वाई इट इज कॉल्ड बोर्न विद एन ई दिस इज द करेक्ट थिंग दिस इज रॉन्ग हियर सो इट इज एयर बोर्न वॉटर बोर्न 
with an E and uh, sexual contact bore nahi hota airborne waterborne aise generally kehte hain okay means of spread now many of these agents are also spread by animals now what have we seen here we have seen that there is an infected person and there is a healthy person now there is a there is direct contact right this handshake does not spread hiv aids right handshake spreads things like covid right when you have particles on your hand even common cold and all of these things can be spread by handshakes right when you sneeze on your hand or when you touch like your nose if you are infected and if you touch your nose or something and you get some bodily fluid or virus on your hand you can't see it so you won't know ki wo hai ya nahi hai but then you go and shake hands with somebody that the other person will also get that on the hand and eventually has the possibility of getting infected this is uh, kissing kissing also cause can uh, cause um transmission of these diseases because these are direct because this is body flu bodily fluid the saliva is a bodily fluid and that can cause uh, transmission of sexually contact sexual diseases then you have by air so air borne and this is like common cold covid wagaira indirect contact this is through like the clothes or this thing or like you you share some uh, utensils and all so if you have saliva the saliva of a person that you uh, use if you somebody uses those utensils immediately without washing that is indirect contact that also passes diseases okay and then you have by food right by food when the food is infected right when the food is infected such as even typhoid or uh, if cholera cholera p ho sakta hai because water is also included here so cholera typhoid these are spread through uh, food and then you have mosquitoes or insect we'll come to these two points abhi so many of these agents are spread by animals animals may themselves be infected for example uh, rabies dogs that are rabied they are also infected by rabies and uh, they can spread rabies and they or they may act as reservoirs of the infection right so they only have that infection in there for example like the saliva or somewhere but they are not themselves affected by it right so these are zoonotic diseases such animals that carry these uh, diseases are called vectors i spoke about vectors in the previous uh, video also when i talked about flies like when we talked about the five f's so flies you had to reduce uh, the number of flies and you had to prevent them from sitting on your food because they are vectors they carry diseases these animals are called vectors they transmit infection from an infected person to a potential host right most common is mosquito everybody knows about mosquito everybody knows what a mosquito spreads right like malaria or dengue or chikungunya or uh, zika virus right these are all spread by or encephalitis japanese encephalitis all of these are spread by mosquitoes mosquitoes are the most common uh, vectors because they are very wide spread and there's a lot of different mosquitoes that spread different diseases and because they directly feed on your blood right so baki kaisa hota hai flies wagaira they don't feed on your blood they sit on food and you might ingest it but mosquitoes directly put things into your blood stream because they bite and feed on blood and can inject bitten person with a disease so what they do is they uh, they can go and if it is uh, like if an if a mosquito has uh, it actually goes to a house and it bites a person who is suffering from malaria then that mosquito will have the malarial pathogen in its uh, in its bite so whenever it bites another person then he the mosquito can spread the plas, uh, plasmodium vivax which is the pathogen into the other person and that can uh, the person can also start suffering from malaria so this is spread by female anopheles mosquito so if it bites a human with malaria carries the protozoan plasmodium vivax injects into another person where the protozoan can grow and then causes malaria theek hai so it is a human be mosquito this is a mosquito okay not a bird and then again another human then you also have a female edis aegypti edis aegypti to bahut karta hai because it gives dengue chikungunya zika 
okay similar principle then you also have culex the culex species is the one one that transfers filarial worm for uh, that causes in elephantiasis uh, you have to be bitten over a long period of time for a long period of time many times by this culex species containing the filarial worm to have elephantiasis okay bats are also a big uh they are big vectors because they carry many many diseases for example these are and these are all virus okay these are all viruses so bats are reservoirs and they are not themselves infected right so they apparently covid has come from bats but there is not just covid but all the, the sars ebola nipa these are all from bats right so bats carry these these are called zoonotic diseases zoonotic diseases are those that are spread by that uh, by, by animals okay so ebola sars nipa nipa was in kerala right if you know about ebola do you know about ebola if you don't you should go and read about it it's a terrible disease uh, by the virus ebola virus and uh, uh, it was mostly found in africa so there have been a few waves of ebola that keep happening and now thankfully there is a vaccine which is a very good thing um, right and you have sars sars also was uh, in china in 2000 i don't remember when but there was a big wave of sars and uh, we also have time to time we have things like swine flu which is also a virus based uh, in flu like virus and uh, anyway in this you also you can also add animals such as uh, dogs cats actually bats also can spread rabies so all of these can spread rabies also so rabies virus is also a zoonotic disease okay so what happens is when microbes enter the body they spread to various different tissues or organs now you breathe some organism in it has a it has various places that it can go into your body right so what happens is each of them has a selected kind of a niche what is a niche it has a, like a specific place that it likes to go to and make a home so generally the selection of organ is connected to the point of entry so airborne viruses are generally those that infect the respiratory tract or the lungs or the uh, nasopharyngeal this all this tract basically from your nose to your lungs the bronchus and all that so all of so the selection of organ is connected to the point of entry even water borne diseases generally going to the stomach or the hepatitis or the liver or you know stuff like that or the or the or the intestines so air lungs pneumonia mouth gut lining such as typhoid air like uh, pneumonia uh, covid common cold all of these things mouth if it if you ingest something then it can affect the gut lining for example typhoid if you have infected food uh, typhoid uh, which is spread by the bacterium salmonella typhi can infect you like or uh, jaundice causing virus can infect the liver because it also goes through the mouth but it also it reaches the gastrointestinal tract like that and reaches down and it can affect the liver but it is not always necessary so it is not necessary that if it only if it enters through your nose it is only going to affect your lungs or if it enters through your uh, through uh, through like uh, water or food then it will only infect your gastrointestinal tract <clears throat> but you have things like H like hiv enters the body through sexual organs right but it spreads through lymph spreads to lymph nodes and that is where it thrives because it can affect uh, certain Com components of the immune system okay now malaria enters through blood so it goes to the liver and then to the rbcs what does the malaria do malaria goes into the rbcs into the healthy rbcs of human body japanese encephalitis also through blood and goes to the brain right these are mosquitoes mosquito born right so these get injected directly into the blood stream which is why they can spread wherever they want but they always go to some uh, place they spread everywhere but they tend to multiply and cause disease manifestation in certain organs okay it's not as if 
मलेरिया का ये जो प्रोटोजोन गया ये सिर्फ लिवर में ही मिलेगा और सिर्फ आरबीसी में ऐसा नहीं होता है यू विल फाइंड ट्रेसेस ऑफ इट्स ऑफ इट एवरीवेयर बट इट विल प्रेफरेबली लिव इन दोज प्लेसेज एंड मल्टीप्लाई इन दोज प्लेसेज बिकॉज इट हैज राइट काइंड ऑफ कंडीशन दट इट नीड्स ओके सो साइंस एंड सिम्टम्स ऑफ दोज डिजीजेस डिपेंड ऑन द ऑर्गन विच इज बीन इन्फेक्टेड नाउ यू हैव द एंट्री ऑफ एन ऑर्गेनिज्म इन टू योर बॉडी इट हैज गॉन टू अ स्पेसिफिक ऑर्गन Now that organ has certain functions, and if those functions are affected because of the infection, then it will give certain signs or symptoms. And those signs and symptoms are generally specific, specific to that organ. For example, if you have, if it goes into your lungs, if you get a lung infection, you know what will happen. You cough, you feel breathless, or uh, <clears throat> you have a sore throat. you can't speak properly right or you're coughing you have coughing so much because there's a lot of congestion in your uh, in your lungs so or if you go to, if you if it it is in the liver then it causes jaundice what is jaundice jaundice is when your skin your eyes all of these things get yellow because of the bile right so uh, that is when your liver is infected or when it goes to your brain then you have could have headaches fits vomiting unconsciousness so you have we have spoken about symptoms and we have spoken about signs in the previous uh, uh, this thing also part also so you should understand that when all of these things come together it is quite possible that it is because of some sort of a disease if it's just a headache it is possible that it's just a stress headache but if that headache continues and it is accompanied by vomiting or fits then there is there is there is a possibility that there is an infection in the brain then there are other common effects too and that depends upon the immune system of the body so while lungs will cause if you have cold then you will have cough and breathlessness but it is also accompanied by fever sometimes it is also affected uh, accompanied by headaches why does that happen because the body is trying to fight the infection so it generally mounts a complete attack on the <clears throat> on that uh, microbe so there's a lot of other effects also that is not related specifically with the organ which is being infected but there are common effects so in for example immune system recruits many cells to the affected areas to kill the microbes this is called inflammation what is inflammation uh, and then you can have swelling pain or fever inflammation is like a kind of a swelling because there's a lot of cells there so agar if you ever get hurt on your hand if you have a wound you will see that it becomes hot and red right that's because it becomes hot because there are a lot of uh, cells there and they are trying to kill those bacteria and uh, with the heat and stuff and uh, it becomes red simply because there is a large amount of blood supply and that blood is bringing in a lot of cells of the immune system so that is inflammation it can cause swelling it can cause pain it can cause fever right and these are general seeming effects and tissue specificity leads to general seeming effects now for example Uh, hiv aids now hiv aids goes to lymph nodes lymph nodes are a big part of the immune system right and what happens is hiv aids goes into the lymph nodes and the immune system uh, gets badly affected what happens is where does the immune system work the immune system doesn't work in the normal functioning of the body per se aise nahi keh sakte ki aapka digestion kharab ho gaya but where does the immune system work immune system works in fighting of infections so when it doesn't work out when it doesn't work minor infections can happen with higher frequency and severity because the immune system is compromised chhota sa bhi agar sardi ho sakta hai that can have you hospitalized it can get really bad so hiv aids doesn't have a specific manifestation it manifests as Uh, a severely compromised immune system that leads to a lot of infections people generally don't die of hiv aids they generally die of complications that come from these infections because there are so many secondary infections that come because your body doesn't have that immunity right so these are general seeming effects ki infection bahut ho raha hai but that can have a certain reason so as i said hiv aids 
uh, is in the lymph nodes and immune system doesn't work effectively so minor infections happen with higher frequency and severity for example cold if you have a normal cold it becomes pneumonia pneumonia uh, is a uh, terrible infection of the lungs right it is much worse than uh, normal common cold or minor gut infection jo thoda sa aapko thoda sa ek din ka diarrhea ho ke you would have been okay that becomes major diarrhea and blood loss right and these have these things happen with higher frequency also right so these minor infections end up being fatal to people with hiv aids so that is what happens and uh, what happens is that by this we can also understand that severity of the de disease depends on the number of microbes in our body how do we understand this by hiv is because uh, in hiv aids the microbes are not being killed by the immune system our immune system is so weak that uh, the microbes have all the uh, opportunities to grow and multiply as much as they want therefore they become very severe normally what happens is in our bodies when uh, we get a microbe the um immune system it takes time right there are of course the microbes also also multiply they also grow but the immune system is also killing them at the same time like you saw in the previous first second slide you saw leishmania where it was dividing but at the same time that immune system of the body was also trying to eat it up right but in cases like hiv aids the microbial load it's called the microbial load when the uh, when the number of microbes in the body becomes very very high that's called high microbial load which is when it's low it's called low microbial load right so the, the severity of disease depends on the microbial load okay if the number of microbes are smaller it is relatively minor or unnoticed manifestation right but if the microbial load becomes very large the disease may be severe or life threatening okay <clears throat> so immune system is a major factor which determines how many microbes survive in our body right so the immune system starts immediately we every single part of our body has some or the other uh, something or the other that is uh, that acts against these microbes even our skin has certain uh, uh, secretions which help it to fight the bacteria our nose our mouth all of these things from where we ingest or inhale things also have certain linings like the mucosal linings which trap these bacteria and there are immune cells which can kill those bacteria right so the immune system is a major factor that determines the microbes so what happens is the microbes the immune system will not let the bacteria for example if some uh, cold bacterium has entered my nose and it uh, gets trapped by the uh mucosal lining of my nose right the bacteria will uh, the bacteria get trapped and then the immune system cells come and then they eat the bacteria or kill the bacteria so the bacteria don't progress any further than my nose maybe there is a few there are a few bacteria that go and start to multiply in my body but there are immune cells everywhere in every single part of the body so everywhere they start to fight with the bacteria right so it is possible ki if there are four being formed then two are being killed at the same time right so eventually the uh, and it is not that the immune system doesn't just keeps working like that once the immune system has detected that there are uh, bacteria here it brings in more cells more and more cells right and that cells it heats up the body and then uh, you get fever and all these things happen and it's basically fighting the infection so what you should do is you should just rest If you have a common cold, go to sleep, rest, eat properly, and let the body do its job. Right? Unless there's something severe, you should let the body do its job. But generally, the body is very good at doing that. Unless you have compromised immunity, if you are, uh, if you feel, if you are getting normal infections and you seem to be normally healthy, maybe you are not eating the right kind of food. You don't have the right kind of nutrition. because a certain kind of nutrition is required for your immune system to be healthy you should also have proper exercise and all these fitness your immune system is generally healthy right so immune system determines how many microbes will survive even in covid you will see people with compromised immunity and people who generally have um, 
uh, certain lack in immunity due to old age or something like that are more susceptible to that infection simply because the immune system is unable to uh, actually fight with, the, with that infection it is unable to bring in as many antibodies are needed to kill the virus particles okay so that is immune system is a very important part of our body uh, to fight against diseases <laughs> So what have we learned? We have learned that diseases may be due to infectious and non-infectious causes. Infectious agents belong to a number of categories of organisms, maybe unicellular or mic and microscopic or multicellular. We have not talked about non-infectious causes here because honestly, it uh, it's a personal thing because uh, we we I mean you could talk about cancer, you could talk talk about diabetes, but you really can't prevent these things. Per se, by you know taking hygiene or sanitation measures, right? So that is uh, from one person to the other. So that will go into really great depth. That is why we have only talked about infectious diseases here. Disease causing organisms inhabit uh, and affect different parts of the body. So you have seen that these. Uh, enter through different parts of the body and then they can spread and there are certain parts of the body that they like to inhabit where they get the right kind of conditions and then they affect that most of all and then you have certain manifestations according to that the category to which a disease causing organism belongs decides the type of treatment what is the category the bacteria whether it is a bacterium or a fungus or a virus or it is it a worm or a protozoan and if it is a bacterium then what kind of bacterium is it there are various kinds of bacteria also no? different kinds of bacteria so uh, there are certain antibiotics we'll talk about that in the pre uh, next one also but i'll give you a, a short thing about introduction about it there are certain antibiotics that work against most of them they are called broad spectrum and there are certain antibiotics that only work on a very small number of bacteria, but they are very effective in that. Those are called narrow spectrum, right? So you have various different kinds of categories to which you can divide. Again, like we have done uh, taxonomy and we have done classification. You classify these depending upon uh, certain characteristics and then each of them you can see ki ye isko marega, ye usko marega, okay? Infectious agents are spread through air, water, physical contact or vectors. What are vectors? Animals that can spread diseases. So we are done with part two. Uh, please watch part three so that we are going to end the chapter there. And uh, I hope you have understood this. If you have not understood anything, uh, please ask. It's a very simple topic. But if there is anything that you have not understood, you could just email us at the email ID given below. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up or like please comment below and tell us what you liked or what you did not like. Okay. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so. And please press the bell icon so that you get notified every time we upload new videos. Okay. So I will see you for part three. And for now, I bid you goodbye. See you.